Congressman Jerry Nadler, Ted Deutsch, and Eric Swalwell are, are, are introducing a bill that essentially would halt the statute of limitations on crimes committed by a president. Joining us now for more insight into all of this, criminal defense attorney and constitutional law expert Ken Belkin. Ken, thanks for joining us. Thanks uh, for having me. Kicking things off, I want to talk to you a little bit about this move that's being made by uh, um, Nadler and uh, his colleagues there, uh, essentially working towards... Uh, here, here's just one of the arguments. This is made by Congressman Swalwell. That while I disagree with the legal opinion that says a president cannot be indicted during their term in office, Congress can step up right now and change the law to ensure any president can be held accountable for crimes. He goes on a little bit, but then he says President Trump is living proof of the urgent need to close this loophole. What do you think of the overall effort and also, um, I guess what some people might say, a bit of a, an attack on the part of Congressman Swalwell going after the president in that way? Look, the first thing we got to understand here is that this is an attack on the rights of the accused, all of the accused. We have statutes of limitations specifically to protect the rights of the accused. Now, additionally, with a president, in the Constitution, in Article 2, he has a pardon power. He has unlimited pardon power except in circumstances of impeachment, which you know, could extend. It's never been decided whether or not that would apply to a sitting president being charged with a crime, because it's never happened. But many people think it would apply because of that one exception. And there's not only are they trying to vitiate the Constitution's pardon power, this law is a way of circumventing the Department of Justice's guidelines, which are based on that Constitution. Man, there has been so much talk about what is appropriate as far as the Constitution is con concerned. Are we in a constitutional crisis? What are the oversight powers that Congress has? Uh, which brings me to tax returns. Uh, the Ways and Means Committee Chair Richard Neal, he subpoenaed the Department of Treasury, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, and the Internal Revenue Service seeking six years of the president's tax returns. The president not releasing those publicly before. Your thoughts on this effort to get the documents? Look, the president is under no legal requirement to release his tax returns. Certain presidents have done so in the past. They did it voluntarily. He's under no requirement to do so. And this guy is a businessman with a lot of interests. I, I doubt highly that anyone would even understand his uh, tax return without possessing an MBA or a CPA. Uh, now shifting again, as we're talking about constitutional powers, the argument, the House Judiciary Committee uh, voted to cite A.G. Barr for contempt of Congress. Republicans have been pushing back. They voted against this contempt resolution. There's been this argument made that uh, Congress has oversight responsibilities and that they're being forced to take these steps in an effort to do that. Your thoughts on this being the constitutional crisis that some have been discussing uh, and, and also uh, just on the back and forth over holding Thank Attorney General Chairman, Barr in contempt? I mean, look, Attorney General Barr testified for five hours the other day. He doesn't want to testify further because, number one, he believes that some of the testimony could stray in potentially privileged materials under executive privilege. And secondly, that the questioning that Congress is proposing right now is that he be questioned not by members of Congress, by members of the committee's staff and by outside counsel. I don't see why an attorney general should subject himself to outside counsel questioning. Uh, and just to get a little listen uh, from the opposing side, of course, this is Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Take a listen. Oh, sorry about that. Here, I'll just I'll just kind of briefly tell you, uh, in 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 essence, uh, what uh, the speaker was saying. She's, she was arguing that the president is almost self-impeaching because he is every day demonstrating showing more obstruction of justice and disrespect for Congress's legitimate role to subpoena. So she's really pushing back directly on on the president on these issues. Your thoughts on kind of that back and forth? Is there a bit of a, a power struggle? And in, in a sense, our government is set up in that way. Uh, but to see it kind of blatantly playing out when we're talking about about various subpoenas going forward. There is supposed to be a process with which the executive branch can comply with subpoenas. It's an accommodation process. Negotiations are held and a compromise is reached. Some things that are subpoenaed, Congress is not entitled to see. And that's just the reality. And the president has every right to assert privilege in those aspects. But at the end of, yeah. Oh, no, I was, I was gonna thank you for your thoughts, actually. <laughs> uh, but you had one final thought. What were you about to say? Uh, you know, if, if some of this stuff is privileged, Congress is allowed to petition the courts to have it, you know, disclosed to them, and we, they should go through the courts to decide that. We have remedies in place. This is not a crisis. They have an avenue that they can pursue through the federal courts, and if they really feel there's something there, they should do that and let a federal district court judge make that ruling. I had the same thought as you were saying it, that uh, we will likely see a lot of action in the courts coming soon. Uh, Ken Belkin, thank you so much for your, for your insight today. Thanks for having me.